Hey guys, Chad here with the Reptile Rangers. Now we're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center today, and we're going to talk about beak trimming on tortoises. Now, as a medical center, we deal with all kinds of different medical cases, uh, from simple stuff uh, all the way up to major surgeries, major shell repairs, things like that. Now, we've had a lot of people ask us about showing some of the many medical cases that we have. Beak trimming is a very, very simple little procedure. I wouldn't even really call it a medical procedure, but it does and can fall under the same thing. But we're going to show you on a yellow foot tortoise today, okay? So we had this yellow foot come in. Uh, its beak's a little bit long. A little bit longer than what we would like. He's got a little bit of pyramiding on the shell. Um, you can catch the episode on NBD uh, for more information about that. Uh, in tortoises, a lot of the times what happens when they get the pyramiding that you'll see here uh, usually is due to one of two things, either way too much protein uh, and is causing parts of the shell to grow faster than the rest of the shell can keep up. Think about muscles. Um, or it's a lack of calcium or UV exposure and so the bone is not growing properly like it's supposed to. Okay, so one of two reasons why uh, pyramiding typically happens inside of uh, tortoise shells. Uh, now, but anyways, we're not talking about that today. We're going to talk about trimming the beaks. Like things like box turtles and land tortoises um, are notorious for having overgrown beaks. Okay, now what happens if it gets too long, it makes it very, very difficult for them to be able to eat. In the wild, yes, sometimes they'll kind of rub, rub their faces against rocks or they'll bite on rocks, they'll, uh, they'll bite on hard pieces of wood, things like that. Things that will help keep those beaks trimmed down. But if it's not given to them or they just don't do it in captivity or in the wild, they just don't uh, take things that's hard and grind it down, uh, that beak down a little bit, then those beaks will start overlapping. Uh, almost like a massive or major overbite. So we're going to show you the simple ways of dealing with a beak overbite or a long overgrown beak. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, now with this little yellow foot tortoise right here, she's an absolutely cool little tortoise. And you can see right here how her beak is overgrown. Now one of the things that I'm going to say, and this is, this is even with vets um, and some reptilian medical practices, some things they do that I do not like and I don't agree with at all. Uh, a lot of the times they'll use something like a Dremel tool. All right, for one thing, not only is that loud, me all the time is very, very stressful for an animal, but it's very abrasive on them when you're holding them because we already put them under stress as it is. And I'll show you how this has to be done. But whenever you're already holding them and they can't retract their head back into their shell, and then they've got this high pitched whine, um, and then they smell that burning of the, of the, uh, of the beak right there and then all that noise and that vibration is just a lot of stress on them. It's just undue stress. It's not necessary. It's just as simple as a pair of fingernail clippers just like that and I'm like a nail file or you could even use like a metal file uh, something like that. All right now let's show you here this right here is just like our fingernails okay there's no nerve endings in there now it will get uh, there will be some pain if we was to go way too far up there could be a little bit of pain but down here there's absolutely no nerve endings it's just like our nails uh, we can clip our nails off and it's the same concept All right now the first thing that you have to do whenever you do this is you're gonna have to get the little guy right behind the head okay now getting their head and keeping their heads out Sometimes this is easier said than done on certain species. She is cooperating quite nicely with me, so I'm not having to pull quite as hard, okay? And I'm not having to hold as hard. Now, Sebastian's gonna help kind of just hold her into place because no, she's not gonna like this. And just, just like a fingernail, we're gonna go right around. We're gonna go right around the edge and just trim that down. There it is, just like that. Now, you see how absolutely quick that was? And with a Dremel tool, okay, Sebastian, hold her right there. Hold her right there. With a Dremel tool, look at this. Some ridiculous vet or somebody, whoever it is that's doing it, would have been taking this Dremel tool. You remember the noise that's going to come out of it. And they'll be sitting here, and they're going to be holding this thing, and they're going to be trying to run that Dremel tool all around and going to be taking forever to get up to this part right here. And it's just going to take a whole lot more time. We're in four snips. I had that big done. I'm not grabbing her by the head anymore. Now, I am going to have to grab her again just short term. I'm going to take this, okay? Now, what we will do is take and just very gently, I'm just filing that real quick. Hence the nail file. 
Now it's nice and smooth. And I'm not holding her anymore, okay? This is a less abrasive, less stressful way of dealing with beak trimmings when it comes to tortoises. Like I said, this is not a bad thing. It happens, it occurs. And quite honestly, most of the time when beak trimmings uh, or an overgrown beak happens with the tortoises, it's honestly on them. These guys are born knowing exactly what to do. It's just hardwired into them. So if they don't in their habitat, if they don't go and, um, and grind that beak on something, then that beak will just continue to grow. Um, or in the case of cuddle bones, cuddle bones are great. That's why you see a lot of people using cuddle bones and putting them in tortoise habitats is not only can they kind of chew the calcium off, but it's harder. And so they can kind of file that beak down and help keep it trimmed down. Um, same concept as letting a dog run on, you know, having some concrete access or cats having some access. It helps to keep those nails filed down. Um, it's the same concept, um, same thing with these guys. So just remember, with your turtles and your tortoises, box turtles and your tortoises, if they start getting an overgrown beak, this is one way that you can deal with it. Of course, you can bring it to us or somebody that, that, uh, uh, that knows what they're doing. Um, but this is one way that you can deal with it just very simply, very easily. Um, you can use a nail file um, and you can use nail clippers. Uh, toenail clippers are a little bit bigger. They're a little bit sturdier than what these little cheesy things are. Uh, but it does the job just fine. Like I said, right there is, right there is the proof. Right there. And one, that was one clipping. We did four total clippings and it was done. All right. Okay guys, now this is just a short and sweet, really easy clip that we can give you. Something easy to start with, something simple, but something that happens a lot more than what you think. This is turtle and tortoise beak trimming. Now, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit that like button right there. Write us in, let us know what you want to see. We hope to see you again soon, either at the zoo and medical center or on the next episode of Reptile Rangers. Later.